Um, next, we're really lucky, actually, to have with us today uh, Anthony Clark. Uh, Anthony is the chair of the British Business Angel Association, amongst other things. Uh, a very busy guy in the whole world of capital and uh, investment in the whole London scene. Um, and Anthony is going to talk to us today about uh, angel investment. Thank you. Thank you and welcome to everybody and it's good to see so many of you here so early in the morning. And uh, my thanks to Helen from INI and i and to Alan and Steve for inviting us over here today. And just to really introduce myself, I chair the British Business Angels Association. You'll hear in a minute that it's a trade body for the United Kingdom and we've been established as a trade body for about five years. And why are we here and what's the importance of today's event? Well, about six or nine months ago, we at the BBAA we're looking at the returns from our members and we were noticing some interesting trends. This was really at the, the bottom of the cycle. We were finding that our members, our angel groups across the UK, were reporting that deal flow was considerably up from the year prior to that, as much as 50% in some parts of the UK. The issue we also found was that the amount of money that was available from the investors in the networks to invest was very restricted. And what investors were doing was following their portfolios there's only a certain amount of capital they've got to invest. Typically, angels will invest about 10 or 15% of their disposable wealth. So wealth was being shrunk. Property markets and stock markets were reducing wealth. Angels had a finite amount of capital to invest. They were supporting their portfolios because the portfolios of their investments, they couldn't get any exits. The M&A market had crashed. There was no flotations on AIM. No trade sales, really, in the market. Everything froze over. So we could see a real crisis developing in the UK at the early seed and startup stage of just a, a shortage of capital. So we went to our government and we said, look, what are we doing about this problem? We keep reading about banks and all the support, billions of pounds being put into the banking system. What about risk capital? And the government actually did respond and they said, well, okay, what do you want us to do? What, what do you suggest? And we just said, well, what we think would be appropriate is to run an awareness campaign across the UK to actually raise the profile of this asset class because it tends to happen a little bit in the dark. And there's very little known about the angel community and exactly who they are and what they do and how many of them there are out there. And we just felt there was a potential opportunity to introduce this asset class to a whole different group of people that perhaps hadn't thought about it in the past and put their wealth with managers and wealth managers and found that hadn't really worked out for them and this gave them more control of their own investment sort of uh, decision making. So we started with this campaign, we got support of our government, in fact it's running in the nine English regions and we were delighted to be over here as well and we thank I and I for taking an interest and Halo for taking an interest because we felt this was a real opportunity to perhaps widen your interest here today about the whole activity of angel investing. And as a coincidence and not perhaps a coincidence, we also carried out some research in the fall of last year. And this report, which is in your packs, called Siding with Angels, will be part of my talk this morning. We'll get there now. That's it. So, before we start, I'm going to ask you, the audience, just to get to know you better. How many of you have ever made an angel investment? Can you put your hands up if anybody in this room has ever made an angel investment? That's very interesting. I have one angel investor. So that's good because I've got an audience of people now that perhaps will learn something this morning about this marketplace. And perhaps you'll take these messages to the people that you interact with uh, in the community here. Um, you've heard a bit about my background. I've been angel investing since 1995. I've had my usual crop of successes and failures, as we all do. Um, more recently, I've been working in the funding side by creating angel co-investment funds to invest with business angels. We feel this is a very powerful model. Indeed, there are now 45 of these funds across Europe. Um, six or seven years ago, there were none at all. So this is a growing phenomenon, a fund that's able to invest with angels to create syndicates and get the best of the both the professional venture capitalists and the business angels who are the business builders who really mentor the businesses post-investment. But it's important we just all understand, before we get into this talk, what is a business angel? There's a lot of misunderstandings. I'm sure many of you watch The Dragon's Den and you've got your own views on what business angels are about. It is not like what you see on The Dragon's Den. It's a great TV program. My children said to me some time ago, Daddy, we had no idea what you did. And they loved this program. Now, they said, now we actually know what a business angel is. It's fascinating. And they're sitting in front of the TV every night this program comes on because I think it is 
an interesting phenomenon to be able to get into small businesses and invest. But the dragons on TV give those entrepreneurs an extremely hard time, and most business angels are actually not that way at all. They're, they're more aligned to the entrepreneurs in these very early stages. So what a business angel is, it's a, an individual who's not involved with a business prior to investment. This is a, a person who is making their own investment decision to invest in a business where there's no previous family connection. So you're acting almost as a small venture capitalist. This is not love money. This is not money where you're backing a family or a friend in the early stage of a business growth. Indeed, a business angel will typically come in after that. And our research, which I will refer to later, indicates that most business angels invest after businesses have had about £100,000 of friends and family money, love money. So there's no family connection, but typically an angel will invest and get involved in the business afterwards. And that's a really important ingredient, the mentoring experience and skill that can bring to those companies. Indeed, on Dragon's Den, one sees many times now the entrepreneur pitching and then actually taking a, a worse offer than one, one dragon maybe offers to put 100,000 in for 20% and somebody 100,000 15%. But they take the 15% because they think the entrepreneur and the angel can work together to build a stronger business. So that mentoring and, and support connected activity is important. So an angel will typically get involved. So if you're an entrepreneur, you just want the cash and you'd want to get on and run your business. You don't want any interaction with the angels. That's probably not for you. So where do angels fit into the food chain? Well, typically, when we start a business, we have to believe in it ourselves. We have to put some of our own cash into it. We will go knocking on the doors of people we know who probably won't make an informed investment decision. They'll make a judgment on you, an entrepreneur, your personality. They trust you. They'll look less hard and strictly at the actual business opportunity and they'll believe that you can deliver it and they'll trust you. The businesses will just about always start with that friends and family, neighbours money, but if the business has potential and can grow, it's not a lifestyle business, a business you and I could set up, maybe open a shop and then a week later we're trading and we get a bit of stock on credit and then we get customers paying cash and we can almost be cash flow positive from day one. We're talking here of growth businesses where entrepreneurs are developing intellectual property. They're de developing a business that will take a while to get through the funding gap and actually get through what we describe the value of death to get to the promised land. So there's a funding gap. And angels are classically the investors that drop money into that funding gap pre-venture capital. And the emergence of angel co-investment funds is, is a new phenomenon. If we were sitting here 10 years ago, it would have been friends, family, business angels, formal venture capital. Now we've got this sort of hybrid of co-investment funds, tend to be relatively small funds, sub 30 million pounds, who are prepared to go into that investment uh, early growth and early risk decision making. And as the business matures and starts to grow and become more established, the risks in theory become less and the venture capitalists will tend to swarm around those businesses. They don't like coming in here. It's too high risk, the costs of transactions are high, and therefore they prefer to come in at a later stage. So we are really the bridge in the marketplace. So how big is our market? You'd probably be surprised to hear that angels are investing in seed and early stage twice as much capital as the venture capital community in the UK. We're investing around 750 million to a billion. We know this is a, an accurate statistic because most angels will claim tax breaks. And of course the treasury Inland Revenue have a very good mapping exercise. They take our tax returns and they can analyse where we invest, which parts of the UK, what sectors. And it's typically, EIS, Enterprise Investment Scheme, is typically around 650 million a year of tax claims by business angels. And we know at the BBA that uh, there are other investments being made outside of the tax scheme. There are some restrictions with EIS. And therefore, we estimate it's probably getting up towards a billion Yet the early stage venture capital community is less than half a billion. In fact, the 08 statistics, which have come out quite recently, indicate it's around 400 million for the early stage VCs again. So we're actually twice as important in public policy to feed these growth businesses. And indeed, if we look at Europe as a, as a whole, it's around about three billion pounds of overall activity. So the UK represents probably 30% or thereabouts of the whole of Europe. And if we compare Europe with the US, we're about 20% in terms of activity, yet the two trading blocks are comparable.